everybody, welcome back. So in the last video of Pablo getting a bath, I mentioned brushing Pablo before the bath. Now it only crossed my mind while I was editing the video that I have yet to do a video on how we brush him. So we bought something for Pablo a long time ago, which you've probably already figured out by the thumbnail. A Terminator. So this was something a lot of you guys suggested we get for Pablo. It was something we asked the vets about and they said to wait till he was a bit older until his coat was like more grown up till his skin was a bit less sensitive because it's a blade so they said just to be careful on obviously puppy skin so we waited till he was a bit older and then we got it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we brush Pablo. <laughs> I'll give you some little tips and stuff like this while we go along just to kind of so you guys understand how we do it and give you ideas on how you can do it. I am not sponsored by Ferminator. This was something that all of you guys recommended me to get and I went and got one and they are brilliant. So what you'll need to brush your pug is Ferminator and then something to put hair in. I've opted for a tub this time. You can use a plastic bag, a poop bag, anything you want as long as you can put hair in it and it's easy to put stuff into it. And then the last thing you need obviously is a dog. Another thing you'll need is a hoover of some sort, but I imagine everyone will have one of them. And we'll use more down. So you want to get your toe or your thing, whatever it is, beside you, nice and close to you. So what I like to do is I like to get Pablo in between my legs and just keep a hold of him. Because otherwise he's going to be squiggling. So come here fella. There we go. So I kind of just trap him in here like this. Not too hard, obviously you don't want to squeeze him, but I've just kind of got my knees pressed against him. And then with the brush, you want to go with the hair, not against it. So we just hold, so I just get him here, hold my hand underneath his belly to kind of keep him into me. And then just go down his back, like, the, like so. So that was only a couple of brushes down his back and you can see the sheer amount of hair that has actually came off of him. But that's all nice and steady in the brush. So simply with your tub or your plastic bag, press the button and it should. Just give a little brush off. It goes back to like that. The main parts of a pug you want to brush are this bit here around his neck and this bit under his tail here. Now the bit on his tail is the bit he doesn't like. But this is where kind of the most of the hair like kind of pours out excessively. And what I would recommend is doing it in an enclosed area because although the Ferminator does catch up most of the hairs, a lot of hairs still do pour out over the floor. So I'm doing it in the kitchen, closed off, the gate's closed there. So once we've done with the Ferminator, so it kind of keeps all the hairs in here, then we can just clean the floor once afterwards. It's not like all over the carpet and embedded in. You want it on a surface which is nice and easy to get the hair off. So do it on a hard floor rather than a carpet. But if you haven't got a hard floor, then obviously just with strain it to a small area. Let's get going. So when doing the tail, don't just go through. Pull his tail out with your hand and only just tuck it around his bum like that and kind of cup him. And then just go gently down. Obviously you can see he's hard to hold on to. So if you do have two people, then someone just hold him and the other person brush because it's not easy by yourself. Whatever way you manage to get to hold him, just keep him there as long as possible and do as much as you can. So once you're done with the Ferminator, you want to get your normal brush. Now with this brush, you want to go against the hair. The reason for this, and you won't be able to see, but you can see all the hairs that the Ferminator's like took out, but hasn't been able just to pick up, obviously, because it gets so full so quick. So if you give him a quick brush like that, just with your hand, you won't see this, but there is now like a hair cloud around him. And then we'll just give him a brush with this. Now, because you're going against the hair, you do want to be a bit gentle. Obviously, I'm not going right into his fur. I'm just kind of giving his top coat a bit of a lift. Because it will be quite soft. There's any kind of knots. And just keep his hair going the other way. And then one final shake off. <laughs> By this point you're getting very active. And then 
we removed the dog from the room. And that's him all brushed. I'd recommend him putting some like easy, clean, easy white pants on or pants that are gonna go in the wash. Normally, I opt for like sport shorts because the hair just wipes straight off them and you can just wipe it straight off your leg and you don't have to worry about it. But as you can see, I've done it in jeans today, which these are gonna go in the wash, so it doesn't matter because they're gonna get clean anyways, but just look at these. So this is the kind of state you can expect to be in. Obviously the Ferminator does a good job, but this is all from just brushing him because these didn't have nowhere near as much hair on them before. The floor as well was also clean, but as you can tell, there is hairs everywhere. I don't think there's a way of physically being able to do it without getting hair on yourself and all over the floor. I just don't think it's possible. The hair pours out of them. Now I'll show you how much hair came out of Pablo today. Now bearing in mind we brushed him yesterday and bathed him. So this is kind of what you can expect on how much a pug does shed its fur. So that's all the hair that came out of Pablo. As you can see, it was like almost full of this little tub. Now the reason you put it in a tub is because you can literally just rinse that out, use it again. If you put it in a plastic bag, put it straight in the bin. We can just tip the tub into the bin. What are you doing? His hairs soon fill up the hoover though. We have got a normal hoover, but this one just sits in the kitchen purely just to get Pablo's hair off the floor. It is like an animal specific design one. I don't know what the difference really is, but we bought it, it works fine, and we kind of can keep his hair isolated in the kitchen as much as possible. Hope you guys find this information helpful and useful if you've got a pug or if you plan to get a pug to kind of see what extent they do shed at. So a question I've been asked quite a lot is how often should you brush your dog? Now we didn't brush him particularly often. We were normally brushing him maybe once a week sort of, like giving him a big brush at the end of the week. But we weren't particularly bothered about the amount of hairs we were getting on our clothes and stuff. We were quite happy with it. We're going to be now brushing him every night. But if we brush him once a night, it won't be anywhere near as much as how we brushed him today. We'll just kind of give his coat a quick once over every night just to pull them loose hairs out. And he should be fine. You can do it anywhere between once a week and once a day. Experiment when's best for you, you know, depending on how work is and stuff like this. You might just want to do it twice a week, do it seven times a week. It's kind of up to you and pugs will obviously shed at different rates. So work out how much yours is shedding how bad it is and then fit it accordingly hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did then do drop a like on the video if you're new to the channel and want to see more and more information on pugs then do hit that subscribe button and as always guys peace out